get on Mark's here. Oh, okay. okay, see you in a bit. <coughs> this is your coffee. Oh, thanks. You yeah. carry it. No. I'm busy holding other things. Okay. Fight the power. Have a lot dubba dubba dubba. Uh, hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Al Watson. Welcome to this week's edition of Dirty Show Creation. Although it's not actually a weekly thing now, it's like a monthly thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be all about concise, smashing out the joinery and the blacksmithing today. Hi. So what, I've, what we've got set up is one of our kind of eternal problems. Now, if you've watched some of our videos, you'll know this. We, we make the handmade rivets. This is for this job here. So these were made on Friday. We didn't cover it because we've already covered it before. What we did do is we used a different hammer to texture them. So they are a little bit different. I can't remember if a couple of them are stamped or not. No, what we did is we stamped, we stamped some of the heads of the rivets that we've also made. These are a bit long at this point, but they just need cutting down. <laughs> find one that actually looks as if it fits so these are to hold the boards together on the door they get closed like that they go through the door so the door literally sits kind of where my hand is there and what we do is we weld around here chop this off and then grind it back to reveal like a little button What we've got lined up for you today, happy YouTubers, is a little bit of an experiment. So, obviously, if you're going to get into riveting and you're hand making rivets, you want to close them the proper way. Now, I've got a couple of bits here actually, so we'll, we'll kind of go over this. So, here we go. This is a piece of heavy, heavy, whatever you want to call it, industrial riveting. Got these beautiful domes here. Actually, these aren't apparent on the back. Usually it's a dome front and back, but you can see those beautiful rivets. God knows how old this is. God knows when it was made, but obviously it's been made on some sort of shipyard or something with a proper pneumatic kind of hot riveting. So, because, because our door is wood, we can't hot rivet it. Because what will happen is, let's just have a little look. So the idea is washer, actually I think this is called a Oh God, what are they called? They've got a name. Oh, sh what are these called? It begins with Arrive. Oh, I can't remember. Sh I need to find that out, don't I? Lars and Stefan are working with one of the bottom bands. The iron nails are put in place from outside the hull and roves are put on the nails Rose. from the inside. Roves. Okay, got it. Right. Oh, he knows his stuff now, guys. Ah, 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 come back. Our rear rove, which I've just discovered is the name of it, not a washer, which I've been calling them. R-O-V-E? Yeah, rove, I would imagine. So that is essentially what happens. And obviously the oak's going through it, and of course the oak will be coming through this side here. Now what we've done in the past is we've welded into this joint here to attach on the back. So to attach the rivet to the rove. Um, and then cut this off and ground it back. Looks great, but... If you're going to go to the trouble of hand making rivets, uh, it's nice to fit them properly and to close the head of the rivet against the rive, right. rove. So essentially when you put that on there, you can see that's our mark. So what we're going to try and do is cold form that and close the rivet without damaging the wood. 
Usually, of course, rivets are put in red hot. In our instance, we put that in red hot and it's just going to burn the oak and make the joint sloppy. So, this is us today. This is our first experiment. Can we close that rivet cold? Half inch, half inch mild steel, can we do it? And this will determine how we go about doing uh, this exact thing on the door that we're making. I mean, I haven't bothered to hammer texture these, this rove. I love that word now. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. But of course, if we need something very heavy on the back. So we're going to put, pop it on the anvil, which is going to be problematic with a door anyway. But I think there are ways to do it. Oh, hey up, Gary. It's going to cause problems when we're doing it on the door because the door's going to have to be supported for every one of these that we do. And we don't want to damage the door. So that's our little experiment today. Sounds like a bit of a... It is an ex well, that's why we're doing the experiment. I think this has a high probability of you losing your You're probably right. Because <laughs> what I think is going to happen is it's probably going to start closing it and then it's just going to split the timber. Okay. And, you know, it's like, how far do we go with this? The backup is to go back and weld on the back. Weld but and disc I want and to try. This is the whole point of kind of closing that closing that properly yeah so you so can, we've got a backup which works yeah this, six, this is a test this is a test this is an experiment this is experimental joinery at its absolute best so you're going to stay positive aren't you Watson? i'm going to try and stay positive there's Mark. an anger brimming within him i sense it well it's just <laughs> I, I've, I have tried this before and it was just an absolute screw up but this you know we've kind of the only difference we're going to have is our oak is 45 mil thick not 35 mil and our rove or the washer on the back again is going to be set in and it's going to be epoxied in before we do any of this so let's go and basically see if this is going to work go okay well, commence well, music track commence music track okay put that down let's get that off right Peened it. Do you want to just have a little look? So it is kind of working. I think what we've done is we've left too much of this. So that's too long. I think we need to, that's that's what we need to work on. I mean, that ain't going to come out though. Let's just, let's just keep going. I might just move it onto the anvil. Fairly wow. successful test that. Hold it up, Watson. Just a sec. Wow. Oh, it's sharded. Yeah, it's split, but then it would because it's been cold formed. Which isn't ideal because those are kind of quite rough. But what I would also say is, Let's have a look. hold it up so I can see. Yeah. So it hasn't damaged the oak. So that's the forge one. That's the one you've done. Yeah, and I mean, look at that. Forged. That that's tight. So obviously those were moving around because they're not let into the yeah, yeah, yeah. to the oak. So that's that's fine. We can deal with that. I mean, what I would say is there's probably just a little bit too much metal. You think? Yeah, what we need to do is we need to, instead of, I left the diameter of the rivet, I left proud. So we've left 12 mil because this is half inch, half inch mild steel. So I think we could actually get away with less than that. But like looking at that finish, 
that is a far better finish than the uh, welding. Welding, isn't it? Oh, if only you could go back to the throne. Well, this is it. Ooh. Another but throne it, this summer, Watson? I think we might, you know. I think I've kind Ooh. of. Oh. Yeah. Really? I think we might make that other one the one that's at the farm. Really? I think maybe. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. But you know what we could do with that is we could sit and file, hand file that. So I'll tell you what. Yeah, no, that worked. I'm really pleased because, you know, weld is weld, isn't it? And uh, Weld's modern though, isn't it? Well, it is, and it's also not, you know... It's not what we're about. Well, no. So, let's have a look. Just make it, because we don't want it to catch on anything. Well, I think that, actually, if you, still a bit sharp, but. But it, it has worked, hasn't it? It has worked. I'm very, That's really I'm good. very impressed. Well, then, uh, our next job. How are you going to lay the door out so you can secure it? This is the problem. This is why I think it's going to be tripod time. So I think what we're going to have to do is door now needs Cut. all the butterflies letting into it, all of them numbering. It then needs drilling through, it needs the rivets putting through it, and then it needs the washers letting in on the back of the door. At which point we then need to cut the rivets probably to something like, let's think, so that's 12 mil. I think that works, doesn't it? I think, we could, less? I think we could go less, and I think we should go less. Because I don't think we'll get that splitting out. The splitting out is because we're moving so much metal. If you saw when we first started deforming that head of that washer, that's all we really need to do just to make it grip. That uh, washer, this is what I was going to try and show people. So what I was going to do is, look, oh, okay, you can just, just move that washer. But I tell you what, that's gripping and when that's let into the oak, you wouldn't be able to do that. So, good. Really. What was that little tool of Saurus? Oh, it's just a little kind of... Vice bench, uh, hmm? car boot sale. Bought it off the guy who made it, like when he was a kid. A flea market. Uh, a flea market. Yeah. So there you go. No one on no one on YouTube that I can find, other than that boat build. But it's a slightly different setup, and they're using iron rather than mild steel. Has done that. So actually, that's really quite a quite something. So uh, this is hand hammered. Okay, what is the date? It is the 4th. Is it God already? So there we go, hand closed rivet. Really, really pleased with that. So, um, yeah, great little experiment. Uh, okay. So, cool. Bit of, bit of texture on there. Yeah. Yeah, really pleased. Well done, sir. You see, the problem is, is that would make a video in its own right, actually. <laughs> What hammer did you use to texture those guys then? A uh, new hammer, which basically I bought at a car boot sale. Now, I think it might be, and someone can, I'll stand corrected, uh, a riveter's hammer. Look at this under here, it's got the guy's name, E. L. Yeadon. So I think it is a blacksmith's hammer, and I think it might be for riveting. Funnily enough, I think it's handmade because the eye's just got a slight cock eye, so I've had to kind of build that in when I made it, or when I hafted it. <laughs>